And we're back. This week I sat down with the host of the Colbert Report, Stephen Colbert, for a rare behind-the-scenes look at the man and the character from his office in New York. Stephen Colbert, welcome back to Meet the Press. Uh, it is a thrill. I cannot wait to meet the press. Bring them in. <laughs> Bring all of the press in. Let me ask Stephen Colbert the character. Hold on. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> what? I'm Stephen Colbert. Hello. Go ahead, yes, please. What, what, g give me your sense. Who has the edge in this race right now? Romney, obviously. Did you see him the other night? That guy is on fire. He is on a rocket ride to plausible <laughs> at this point. Did you watch? I did. It was a strong yeah. debate. What was it like? I didn't see Surprise. it. Surprise. I didn't see it. I don't really <laughs> watch the news so much. You don't. I come in around 6.30, and then I just say the opposite of whatever Rachel Maddow said the night before. And I'm usually good. <laughs> what does the real Stephen think? What? <laughs> what does the real Stephen think about you the race? yank my chain around. I'm not your <laughs> puppet to dance on your string, David Gregory. The real, Stephen, uh, the real Stephen is actually pleased as a performer that Mitt Romney got his <laughs> in a pile. Because I model conservative punditry. And if he doesn't ha if he's not someone I can follow, then I'm lost. And I have to say, up until Wednesday night, I just thought, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next month. Because why? Because he was just it... a walking, shambling mound of, 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 of weakness, you know? Even the people who liked him didn't seem to be behind him that strongly. People were, you know, stepping, stepping out of his boat. You know, they're all saying, hey, that's the guy. I'll be right there. No, the, I'm just trying the life jacket on right now. I just want to, do I have to self-inflate or do I pull the cord? And that all changed. No, it's all, he, now he's the man. Now, every, now he's got these long, luscious coattails and everybody's jumping on board. And is it hard for guests to, um, to adapt to you in character? What do you like to tell them beforehand? I say, the, I, say the, I say the same thing. I said it to you when you yeah. were on, which is that, listen, thank you so much for coming. Because I'm grateful. I know it must be like a, some, a kind of a tough booking sometimes because it's not like going on Charlie Rose, you know. You, uh, you don't know necessarily what I'm going to say or what I'm going to ask because I'm an active idiot. And, and as I say to the guests, I say, thank you for coming. Have you ever seen the show? Um, I do the show in character. He's an idiot. He's willfully ignorant of what you know and care about. Please honestly disabuse me of my ignorance and we'll have a great time. But sometimes they forget. I mean, I had uh, Senator Bob Carey on. It was a 9-11 commission report. I had him on very early on, about four or five months into the show, and I said that to him backstage. And we were about three minutes into a seven-minute interview, and I don't know what I said, but he turned to me and he said, what the hell are you talking about? But in the middle of the interview, I couldn't explain to him what it was. So I hope, and then he just, mic off, and then left as soon as the interview was over. So I hope at some point someone explained to him that I was just fooling Senator. But I'm very sorry. There's a course, as you well know, at Boston University, and, and Professor Rodriguez has a syllabus that we got a hold of. That, that I'm actually not familiar with what you're about to talk about. You're not familiar? No, what are you talking about? Okay. This is the course at Boston University that's about American satire and that, and that uh, references heavily the Colbert Report. That is very And this university. is what he describes in the, in the syllabus. Colbert satirically exposes hypocrisy with surgical precision, inviting us to think more deeply about serious issues and to improve our socio-political conditions. Does that do about not, have it? I do not get paid enough. <laughs> I didn't realize I was that brilliant. I thought I was making the occasional poop joke. <laughs> but what is the, do you, do you, you are a performer, but you also do make a point. You well, make yeah, a I'm point a with your satire. I'm, I'm a satir All yeah. satirists make points. Satire is parody with uh, a point. That, that's all it is. Right. And so if I, if I was doing satire and didn't have a point of view, then that would be truly like schizophrenic. That would be like trying to establish patterns that aren't really there. I, I always have a point of view. I care about the news. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we do 160 meow meow shows a year. What, 161 shows a year. And you can't do that unless, um, I guess you care a little bit about what you're talking about. Or I couldn't. Some people could. But I, I can't do that. And so I'm interested in the news. And so people often think that I'm an, uh, I, I'm an ideologue or that I have a political intent. Um, I think that People, when, when John and I did the rally two years ago, they thought that had a political intent. But um, I, I comment on things that are in the news. I, A, do not imagine that I'm a newsman. I really admire newsmen. I, I, I really enjoy good news. And, um, and, and I'm not a politician, but I, I, I like playing political games to see what really happens in them. Right. Like that's why I formed a super PAC, or that's why I ran for president or formed an exploratory committee. And to, what did you expose about politics by 
the exploratory committee by by testifying about immigration on Capitol Hill, which some people were critical of, or the or oh, the I super think I would, say, I would say everyone was critical. <laughs> yeah, right, of some I people, would, you're being very yeah, generous. Yes. Everyone was critical of that. Um, but I would do it again in a minute. You know, first of all, what an honor to be asked to go do it. You know, once you're asked, you know, and and to say, well, I'm only going to do it if I can do it in character because I've got no business doing something like that. But my right. character thinks he does. And through him, I can say things that are hopefully in a more palatable way than, than I, I could ever. But that's where you're a performer making a point. So what have you exposed about politics through those examples we just mentioned? Well, in that, and the, the congressional one is that Congress is like eighth grade recess. They were so nasty to each other. And I was just a cudgel. You know, I didn't think they could give a damn whether it was me but they saw me as a way to beat on each other. Mm -hmm. Or rather, Republicans saw me as a way to beat on the Democrats. And maybe that was a, a, a valid way to beat on them. But they sure knew a weapon when they saw one. Um, uh, the super PAC was an act of discovery. I'll give you that example. The super PAC was an act of discovery because I didn't intend to have a super PAC. I intended to make a joke about Tim Pawlenty's unbelievable over-the-top ad which was like a Michael Bay, you know, voice of God, you know, pre preaching to America from the surface of the moon. Tim Pawlenty saves our country. And I couldn't figure out how to end it. And at the end, it just said libertypack.com. And I said, well, just put colbertpack.com on the end of ours. And that one thing led to another, and including, you know, uh, a lot of lawyers. And what <laughs> I found out was is that there's an entire industry in politics, which I didn't know, I suspected, there's an entire industry, there's a politico-industrial complex that is not only raising money, but that is built around making money off of the fact that there is so much money in politics and that there are almost no rules. A lot of what your character does, a lot of what you do through the program is similar to what you're talking about, the super PAC. You expose what's absurd or what simply doesn't work about politics and about our institutions of government, which I think a lot of your, your followers and your, and your viewers believe. Well, I don't, know, I don't know if I do. I don't know if I, I don't know if I expose it, but I try to be. I try to be aspects. I try to right. put myself in the news or to embody the thing, rather than like John does, like what's called pure deconstruction, where he picks apart what's happened in the day's news and he kind of lays it out for you right. like a cadaver. Right. You know? and, and, he, like, and he. But, can... I, but I, I falsely reconstruct the news. Mitt will put the leaders of Iran on notice. Right. You know, and so that's a different way of doing to make the a, same to make kind a of point job. of the absurdity. Right? right. Exactly. Exactly. And. If, if I do it and something in the news is doing it, that thing, that real thing, is probably a uh, bull. Because if I can go out and do it and, and it's happening in the real world, the closer it is to me, the less you should trust it. Why do you think so many people think you and John Stewart are more effective at exposing hypocrisy, getting to real truths than the, than the news media is? I don't, know of, if, uh, I don't know if that's the case. Well, I, I think there are certainly the people case. who believe that. Okay. Um, that they're entitled to their beliefs. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, jokes make things palatable. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Um, comedy just helps an idea go down. That's all. And, and it just makes you listen for a minute. We, we've been talking some about the, the absurdity of politics uh -huh. and political discourse. So here comes... Um, your new book. Which About they... damn time. <laughs> Just, I mean, the QVC I mean... guys are coming in here in a minute. We're going to sell my book along with serpentine chain necklaces. So, Order now and you'll get one. But this goes right to what you're talking about in, in, in this campaign. Yes. America again, re-becoming the greatness we, we never weren't at yes. a time when, as you write about, America's perfect, now we should change it. We have to fix it. We have to fix it. America's perfect and we have to fix it. Right. Okay. Because America is an exceptional country. Why did you have to have a book, by the way? What? Why, why write another book here? I mean, you've written others. You obviously, <laughs> you obviously haven't read it. You have to ask that question. Hey, Homer, Iliad was good. Why write the Odyssey? <laughs> hey, God, why two Testaments? <laughs> One was fine. <laughs> but really? You, no, but you, wow. felt you, well, you felt you needed You've already this. found someone to marry you, right? Because <laughs> you were rude. I understand. Okay, please. Well, you felt the you, you felt the need to re write this. Yeah, because well, I don't know how things are going up there in Network Town, <laughs> but down in Americaville, USA, people are hurting. David Gregory, and this thing, this book has common sense answers to people's problems. You know, is this tells you how to find a job? Did the outcome of this election change uh, anything significantly? Well, sure, sure. I'm not Ralph Nader. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I don't think that there's no difference. 
there, there is a difference. I, I don't know what the difference is, though, because I think that there are. There, I think there is a possibility that Obama would be, say, more aggressive, uh, uh, a more aggressive reformer or changer in this in the second act of his presidency. And I don't really know how. I also don't know how Mitt Romney would govern. He might govern as a technocrat. And that sort of seems to have been his career. Um, as like the guy from Pepsi who comes in to run GM. You know, he can't tell us what he's going to do because he hasn't seen the books yet. Um, but we don't know because he seems absolutely sincere as a moderate. And he also seemed pretty sincere as a severe conservative. So that's not a dig. It's, act, it's honest confusion because he's got a good shot of winning. And if he does, I hope he's a good president. Um, and and if, if Obama wins, I hope he keep some of the promises he didn't keep the first time. But I have no idea how it changes for us, but I know there's got to be a difference between these two men, or, or we're all part of a huge, cruel joke. David, any thought of running for political office yourself? No, no, absolutely none. I have said terrible things with a straight face on camera. <laughs> Can you imagine the political ads that could be run against me? Can you imagine? Stephen Colbert, the full interview on our website, meetthepressnbc.com. Um, 